I have never heard of a single other collector on the planet that has what's inside there. So if you want to see it, make sure you stick through till the end of the video. What up, peeps? And welcome to the world's greatest video game collection room tour. Now, you and I both know that is not a factual statement, but you gotta play that YouTube game, so let's take a look. see we have this super long couch here we have two tvs mounted on the wall and then we have these two tall tables right behind the couch with these pull-out stools and we wanted this game room to be really really functional because we love having game night with our friends with everyone from the store and this is just the best way to do that so the couch can sit probably six to seven people and then back here on the tables can sit six more people so we have plenty of room for everyone when they come over and have game night. So this is what you see when you are sitting in front of the televisions, whether you're on the couch or at the tables behind the couches. We have a bunch of different consoles right now. Not everything is fully hooked up yet because I just got the HDMI switcher. There's an AV switch as well. And I'm trying to figure out which consoles I want on which TV. So a couple things are hooked up currently, but this is the one part of the room that's not really completed yet. I just need to make it look nice and work on the cable management and get everything hooked up the way that I want it to be. This is probably my favorite part of the game room. On this side, we have my Super Nintendo collection, and on this side is my Nintendo 64 collection. The Nintendo 64 has pretty much always been my favorite console of all time. I love the Nintendo Switch as well, but the Nintendo 64 has that nostalgia factor for me. I was the perfect age when Super Mario 64 came out. It was one of the first games that I beat all on my own, and to this day, it remains my number one favorite game of all time. I've played through it, I couldn't even tell you how many times, probably close to 100, and uh, I go back every year or two and beat it again. Super, super cool. I do have the full North American Nintendo 64 library. That's every game, every box, and every manual. I also have a bunch of controllers, different console bundles, other accessories, some different variants and special editions and stuff like that. And Super Nintendo is actually the console that I'm focusing on right now. And currently, as of the time of filming, I need roughly 259 games left to complete the US library. You might notice that I have a lot of the Nintendo 64 games kind of pulled out a couple inches on the shelf and it looks really weird. It doesn't look great, but there's a reason and that is because I am currently in the process of trying to 100% complete all of these games. All the games here do have their cartridges and they all have their manuals and obviously the boxes, but there's some other stuff that comes in the Nintendo 64 games originally that I'm trying to get and that includes a precautions booklet which is basically a little white, black and white uh, booklet that has some information about like, you know, electrical shock and like all this different stuff. And then every game comes with a clear plastic baggie over it originally. So I'm trying to get all of those to complete these and I'm trying to get them all original. I'm not trying to just use whatever bags I find. I want the original ones. So if the game is pushed in like this, it has that precautions booklet and the baggie. If it's pulled out like this, it means it's missing the baggie. Some of the ones that are pulled out are also missing that precautions booklet, but every one that's pushed in is fully complete. I currently have five complete US libraries in this room. That is for the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, the Virtual Boy, Wii U, and Sega Dreamcast. This is my Nintendo GameCube collection, which is another one of the libraries we have every single game for. There are some variants and like special editions and stuff that I'm still looking for, but this is one of every game as well as the complete Sega Dreamcast collection. I actually decided a while ago to make room for the game room to get rid of a lot of my Sega stuff, 
but I kept the Dreamcast stuff because at the time I was only like 11 games away from the full library and it now is complete of course. So decided to keep that. I also have a bunch of different controllers and other accessories and stuff like that. Uh, some different console bundles up top. But the GameCube was actually the first console that I saved up for and bought myself when I was in middle school. And I bought it for one game in particular. And that game was Animal Crossing. I have both the regular one and a Kmart bundle version. I played this game with a friend of mine at his house. I stayed the entire weekend. All we did was play Animal Crossing. We were playing in the living room. His mom was playing Animal Crossing in her bedroom and his dad was playing Animal Crossing in his office. Everybody was playing it. It was the first time I had ever heard of the game and I fell in love. And from that point, I started saving up my money. I actually bought the game about a month before I even had the console because once I got enough money, I was like, well, I'm gonna buy the game anyway, might as well get it now. So I did, and I read through that manual so many times, looked at it all the time. Finally, I went to visit my grandma and she took me to, I believe, GameStop at the time and she put in some of her own money to help me get the console. I think I got a memory card, an extra controller, and then I believe that I also got Wario World and Super Smash Brothers, which also are two of my favorite GameCube games, but Animal Crossing, for me, for the GameCube, is where it all started. This is the full North American set for the Virtual Boy. There was only 14 games released in the US. I also have a bunch of Japanese ones, and I'm pretty close to completing that set as well. I also have some different accessories and I have a boxed console to go along with everything as well. Up above the TVs, I have my Wii U collection. This is another full North American library that we have. Up top, we have a bunch of different console boxes, different bundles and special editions. And then up on the right side, up top there, we have a bunch of the Disney Infinity, Skylanders, and Lego Dimensions bundles. Like I said, this is a full North American library, but we do have some Japanese imports as well, some Japanese exclusives. We also have a bunch of different variants and special editions, big box games that come with Amiibo. We have some different controllers and all sorts of other stuff. But in particular, we have two of the rarest games in the entire collection. And those are these two games right here, the Hyrule Warriors Limited Edition and Mario Kart 8 Limited Edition. These games were exclusive to the Nintendo store in New York City, and there's rumored to be anywhere from three to 800 of each that were produced. Who knows what the actual number is? I don't think it's been officially released at all, but these things are incredibly rare, and because of that, they're super, super expensive. If you just want the stuff that comes inside of these games, the Mario Kart comes with a little uh, blue spiky shell statue thing, and the Hyrule Warriors comes with a Legend of Zelda scarf, those items are actually available in other special editions from the UK and from other regions. So you can get those items really cheap. You can get those special editions for maybe a couple hundred dollars, whereas these ones here are probably going to run you multiple thousands each. I unfortunately had to turn this off while I film because it ends up making a lot of noise. It's super, super loud. But this is my Night Moves Cocktail Pinball Machine. This thing is incredible. It is so much fun. It's not the most advanced or high-tech pinball machine, but it is really, really cool. Got this for a steal from an estate sale years ago. And I actually had somebody come out uh, pretty recently over the past you know, few months and get it all repaired. They cleaned all the play field. They replaced a bunch of light bulbs and fuses and it works perfect. I would love to add more pinball machines and arcade machines to the game room, but right now there's just no room. So maybe in the future, if we can build a house and build a gigantic game room, we'll have not only the entire collection, but a mini arcade as well. Around the game room, you'll notice a lot of kiosks and signs, promotional items, display pieces, stuff like that. And I really, really love collecting this kind of stuff because as a collector, you like to get stuff that's rare for your collection. But in addition to the items being rare and hard to find, they have really, really awesome history with them. And that's because demo units like this used to be available in retail stores for people to play, for people to try out games. And, you know, kids would just beat the crap out of them. A lot of them got destroyed. And the ones that remained are mostly, at this point, I think, in collector's hands. And I just love getting that kind of stuff because it's so cool. And in particular, 
the Pokemon Snap Station here. This was my number one most wanted item for my collection for multiple years. And I got super, super lucky and I found somebody selling one locally in Oregon. So this unit most likely came from a, you know, semi-local blockbuster as well. And the reason that I always wanted one and the reason that this was my most wanted item is because my family used to go to Blockbuster all the time when I was a kid to rent video games and movies. We shopped at Game Crazy, which was attached to Hollywood Video, but for some reason, we never really went to Hollywood Video. We always went to Blockbuster, and I remember using one of these machines when I was a kid. This one is 100% working. I have printed stickers with it. It's missing some paperwork here and there. It doesn't have the correct Pokemon keychain, but overall... This thing is in beautiful condition. I can't believe that that little plastic shelf is not broken. It is so flimsy. I have seen kids climb on this when I had this in my store. Had to get it out of there. I'm surprised that it lasted so long and it's awesome. I love this thing. Up and around the Pokemon Snap Station here is my Nintendo NES collection. And this is really where my introduction to video games started. The NES came out before I was born I was born in 1990, but as far as I can remember, the NES was the first console that I really played. I had a friend who lived a couple houses down from me when I was growing up, and she had an older brother who had an NES with a bunch of games, and we played a lot of stuff. But there was one game that stuck out to me, and that was Excite Bike. And I don't really know what it is about that game. It's it's very simple, but I think that what it does, it does very, very well. And the fact that it has a built-in, like, course building part of the game is so cool to me because I did not see that kind of mechanic in a game again until Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And there's a huge gap there. I'm not saying there, were, there weren't other games in between those that had the ability to build your own course or track, but that just seemed so ahead of its time for me and I really grabbed onto that when I was younger. And I love Excite Bike. It's super cool. The NES is kind of kind of like the crown jewel console for a lot of collectors, especially those that are older than I am. Pat the NES Punk, AVGN, a lot of people kind of like focus on the NES as their main thing. And while that might not be the case for me, I do still appreciate it. I might not go back and play these games as much as I would with Super Nintendo or N64, but I do love the NES and I love collecting for it. So the house was built in 1825 by General Custer, and this used to be a garage that was converted into a livable space by the previous owners, which is really awesome that it was already done because that's what we were planning on doing when we bought a house. No other room was big enough for the game room, basically. So that was our plan, and luckily it was already done. There was still some work we had to do to get it, you know, more set up how we wanted it. And the washer and dryer are still in here, as you guys probably saw, but it is awesome. However, it's not big enough. So in the future, we are hoping to be able to build a house. And if that happens, we're going to build a giant room for the collection, similar to what The Last Gamer did, but probably not to that scale. Um, something that was maybe four times bigger than this room, I think would be awesome. That would probably be a third of what his game room was in terms of size, but that would be perfect for us and hopefully we can get there one day. When I got rid of a bunch of stuff and I kept the Dreamcast stuff, I also kept the Sega Pico because we are only one game away from a full set. It's not a rare game, it's a little uncommon, but it's not expensive or anything. Just haven't come across it and I haven't thought to just buy it on eBay. So behind my Nintendo glass case here, and around the corner from the NES games, I have original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance are in the other room that's kind of attached to the game room, but original Game Boy and Game Boy Color is here. I don't have a huge collection for these consoles, number one, because they're kind of hard to find, but also I'm not a huge fan of handheld gaming. I have done it in the past, obviously. I had most of the Game Boys growing up, played a lot of the Pokemon games and not much else, but um, I do still love collecting for it, and obviously it's Nintendo, so it fits with the room and the collection and everything. Um, I do enjoy collecting for it, but like I said, I don't find stuff very often, especially with the original Game Boy stuff. A cartridge-only copy of a rare Game Boy game could be 40 or 50 bucks, 
but then the complete in box copy can be a thousand dollars just depends on the title the boxes and manuals for game boy stuff is so much more rare than the cartridges and because i only try to collect complete in box makes it really difficult to find stuff but i'm pretty happy with the collection that i have so far my nintendo switch games are here but this is not all of them these are just the like standard case versions Behind the camera there, we'll take a look at in a moment, are all of my special editions and big box stuff. But the Nintendo Switch, honestly, might be my favorite console of all time. I'm always going to say that it's the Nintendo 64 because of the nostalgia, and because Super Mario 64 is my number one favorite game. But that game was also released on the Switch with the Super Mario 3D All-Stars Collection, and it's available from the Nintendo 64 Switch Online. So... Honestly, Switch might be my favorite. There's not only so many amazing games on the console, but there's just so many games in general. This has like one of the biggest Nintendo console libraries in a very long time. The Wii had a bunch of games, but a lot of it's just shovelware. But with the Switch, even though there are a ton of games that have been released for it, it seems like there aren't that many shovelware titles, which is really cool to see. So I love collecting for the Switch. Right now, I have just about 1,100 games, which is crazy because I feel like I'm not even halfway to, you know, to the full set. And they're, of course, still releasing games. Who knows how much longer they will do that for the Switch. I don't know when Nintendo's going to move on to the next console, but I'd be happy with the Switch just being around forever since I love it. But, man, just there's so many good games. I could talk about it forever. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to stick on it for too long, but... The Switch is amazing. On the opposite wall here, I have all of the big box stuff, the collector's editions, stuff like that. And there are so many that honestly, I have kind of stopped buying a lot of these. I was getting basically every one that came out from Limited Run or from NIS America or Super Rare Games or any of those like limited print companies. But I had to stop because as you can tell, I do not have room. My entire Switch collection used to be here, but I ran out of room, so I had to move PlayStation over here. The big box stuff is staying here for now. I do think that in the future, I will have room to display everything nicely if I can build the room the size I want it to be. But for now, I kind of need to chill on the big box stuff, but there are some really, really cool ones. Up above my Nintendo Switch games, I have all of the different console bundles, a couple more big box games up there as well. I have some different controllers and accessories going down the side here, all the different Joy-Cons, all the retro controllers. And then I have the Switch Lite consoles, as well as a bunch of different statues and figures down here. Some of those are the first four figures ones, which are really awesome. And below that, we have some other special edition Switch games that come in like bags for some reason, some different accessories. And then I have some Nintendo or video game related soundtracks. Lots of Nintendo ones in here. And then just some other PlayStation stuff next to that. Flipping around from the Nintendo Switch games there, we have the PlayStation 2 section. This is one of the biggest libraries and I'm only about halfway through the set. This is just over 900 PS2 games. There are roughly 1800 that were released in North America, which is really, really crazy. I cannot fit that library in this room, so hopefully we can expand in the future. I have this really awesome PlayStation 2 light-up cabinet here, which I love. I have some of the more expensive or rare titles in there, along with a bunch of big box special edition stuff and some sealed accessories, a bunch of Mega Man figures and stuff here. But the PS2 is a console that was really important for me when I was growing up because that was about the age where most people who play video games, they probably start off with more Nintendo style games, but then as they get older, they become a teenager. They get into Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, and stuff like that, and I was no exception. I've always loved Nintendo. I never stopped liking platformers and, you know, cute games like that, but when it came to the PS2, I did get into a lot of other stuff. I played games like Headhunter and ATV Off-Road Fury and stuff like that, so it was cool growing up with that also because my dad would play PlayStation stuff with me. More PS1 than PS2, but still... Uh, we played all the Tomb Raider games together growing up in Medieval 1 and 2, and I watched him play Parasite Eve, all sorts of stuff like that. But PlayStation 2 is a massive library to try to tackle. I'm not focusing on it at the moment, but just as I've been passively collecting, I've gotten about half of the U.S. library so far, 
and I absolutely love collecting for it. And right next to the PS2, we have my Nintendo Wii collection. As you mentioned earlier, there are a lot of shovelware games on the Wii, which unfortunately makes it a little less exciting to collect for than most other consoles. I'm not saying there aren't great games on the Wii, there definitely are, but there's just so many games that were essentially just cash grabs aimed at old people or little kids. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate. The Wii has a really, really large library. I think there's around 1200 games or so. So going for the full set is a daunting task. Eventually I will probably get there, but there's a lot of other consoles that I plan on focusing on before I move on to, you know, focusing on the Nintendo Wii. But there still are some great games. One in particular that I really, really liked was Little King's Story. And I think there might have been a version on PSP as well, I'm not 100% sure. But if you enjoy the Pikmin games, you will like Little King's Story. It's a really, really fun game where you control a king and you have a little mob of villagers that you control kind of in the way that you control the mob of Pikmin. Really, really fun game. I would highly recommend you guys check it out. Below the Switch Special Editions, I have the original PS1 section. And it doesn't take up too much room because they're in like CD cases, so they're, they're kind of small. But I have quite a few games. I'm really proud of this collection. One thing that I really enjoy about collecting PS1 is that there's like, there's not a lot of like special editions and stuff like that. So you get either the regular cases, you get the long box ones, or you get like the double packs and like, you know, the lunar games come in like these big boxes. But there isn't, like with the Switch, you have so many different sizes and shapes and bundles and all that kind of stuff. But with PS1, you really only have a few different things. So they are nicely stored you know like all the long box games are right here there's some behind the tv as well i have a lot of the double packs and stuff like that up here and then all the you know regular case games down there but like i mentioned earlier um i grew up playing a lot of ps1 with my dad which was always really really cool he loved all those tomb raider games so we you know we played a lot of stuff i also played a lot of the tony hawk games i played uh some final fantasy stuff and a few other games here and there ape escape stuff like that um, but I always really liked the PS1, and, uh, I'm happy with the collection that we have so far. I actually have a bunch of, like, signs and stuff as well. I've got that one here. Got the PS1 kiosk, which I traded an Xbox One console for this, um, which was super awesome. And then I've got, like, some different accessories and controllers and a couple different console bundles and stuff like that on the bottom. Since we just talked about the PS2 and how big the library is, I guess I should show you guys what's in this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy chest. Like I said, I don't think any other collector on the planet has what is in here. And you guys can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that this is pretty unique to my collection. So let's take a look and see what's in here. These are all official Sony brand PlayStation 2 memory cards. This is almost 400 of them. Some of these are Japanese exclusive colors. That's why you see some that look a little bit weird. That is actually a PS1 memory card. That's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> but the silver ones, the white ones, these only came out in Japan. Same with the clear like lemon yellow one. But my plan with these is to eventually have one memory card per game. As you guys know, a lot of the PS2 games have a memory card slot in the case. Not all of them, but most of them do. And so my, my goal and my plan is to have a completed library, a full set of US games, and have one memory card per game. You guys can let me know if anyone has ever done that before, but... If anyone starts now, I think I have a pretty good head start. I have a bunch of toys and figures and stuff around the game room as well. Sometimes I kind of try to put them up like this, where there's maybe like a little bit of a theme to them. Sometimes I just have them randomly around the collection. But I do have this one glass case here, which is a pretty new addition that I have everything set up in different themes. So the first one up top is Donkey Kong. The reason Donkey Kong is on the top is because Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, not only my favorite Super Nintendo games, but 
Some of my favorite games of all time, Donkey Kong Country 2 in particular, I always say, is my second favorite game behind Mario 64. And I've played a lot of Donkey Kong games, and there hasn't really been one that I did not enjoy. So I wanted to make this little Donkey Kong shrine here. There's all sorts of stuff in here. We have some old figures and pins, some not for resale games, lots of stuff. Really, really awesome. Next one down is Banjo-Kazooie, one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games. There's not a lot of merch out there for Banjo-Kazooie aside from like the newer things that are being released by Fangamer. So some of this is from them, but a lot of this stuff is older as well. That Banjo figure is from the Diddy Kong Racing series. The plushies back there are older. The controller was custom painted for me by Zoki64. I got that many, many, many years ago. We have a soundtrack in there, some pins, more not for resale games. Next one down is Pokemon. And the Pokemon box in there for the GameCube, that is the big box version and it is factory sealed. That is probably one of the most expensive things in my entire collection. I have turned down offers of over $5,000 for that simply because I don't have another one to replace it with. I don't really care about having it sealed, but I do want a complete one, so I can't sell it till I find a replacement. We have some special controllers and other consoles and stuff in here. More not for resale games and a bunch of figures and pins and all that fun stuff. And then the very bottom one is Mario. Obviously, with Mario 64 being my number one favorite game, I also love Mario Kart and Mario Party, Mario Tennis, all those. So I had to have a Mario one in here as well. That red DS is the one that came bundled with Mario Kart DS, which is pretty cool. And that Luigi is a little coin bank. That is the oldest item that I have in my collection. I actually had, I owned that exact one when I was a kid. And when I sold my collection, my friend Kevin was nice enough to offer to buy it from me, which he did because he knew I was going to start collecting again. And once I did, he gave it back to me. So that is the only item in my collection that I have from when I was a kid. Lastly, I have this little tiny Pikmin set up here, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, these are Japanese exclusive Pikmin figures that were either like Gashapon things or like a blind box type thing. So there's a bunch of enemies here, a bunch of actual Pikmin. There's a little Olimar, a couple plushies back here. Um, I'm actively trying to get more of these. This is just what I have so far, but I absolutely love the Pikmin series. So had to get these. So that pretty much does it for this room, but this is not the entire game room. This is the main one, but if we walk into the little hallway thing here, there's another room right here that is directly behind the game room. And we call this my streaming room because this is where I plan on setting up a desktop computer and doing a bunch of live streaming on Twitch. So far, all the streaming I've done has been um, just through a little laptop that we have and I've just been playing like Mario Kart and stuff. Uh, but I plan on getting a dedicated PC set up in here to actually stream some stuff. So in here is my streaming room. I have all sorts of signage and stuff like this giant game crazy sign that I have nowhere else to put right now. As soon as you walk into the room, if you look to your right, you will see these two shelves here. And these are housing most of the handheld consoles and then some special edition games as well. So the top shelf here, we have the original Game Boy stuff, some of the different Play It Loud Game Boys with the original plastic cases that all have the paperwork, which is Always the hardest part to find for those. And then we have Game Boy Colors and Game Boy Pockets and uh, lots of different ones here. Some couple like Japanese import ones and stuff like that as well. Love collecting all the different colors and different bundles. Then we have the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. This one here is a factory sealed limited edition. It's the uh, Onyx and Platinum dual color one, which is really cool. We also have this like Target exclusive Donkey Kong bundle with a lime green SP. There's another uh, Target exclusive that comes with uh, Spider-Man 2. We have the Game Boy Micro there. And then moving down, we have original DS, DS Lite, some 2DS and 3DS stuff here. And uh, the standout one here is the Seattle Mariners DS Lite. That one is still factory sealed. Uh, you can only get that Go, by going to the Seattle's like baseball stadium. I don't know how long they were available, but uh, seems to be pretty rare. And then we have more down here. 
tons of them here. DSi, 2DS, 3DS, all sorts of stuff. These blank boxes here are the refurbished versions that you could get from Nintendo's website. So they're all different refurbished bundles here. Every single one is either a different color or a different system or something like that. The shelf next to that has a few more that I just can't fit over here. And then we have some special edition stuff, some big box stuff, lots of the Pokemon bundles there. Every single one of these Bakugan things has a different figure with it. Found those all at Goodwill for $4.99 each. And then some more big box special edition stuff here, mostly 3DS. And then even more right here. I know it's really hard to see. This room is kind of narrow, so it's hard to get like a good camera angle, but I have three shelves here. This one has all of my Nintendo 3DS games, aside from a lot of the big box ones we just saw. And then we have the original DS here, which continues on to this one. And then below that, I have a bunch of video game related VHS and DVDs. As I mentioned earlier, handheld gaming is not my preferred way of playing video games. So I'm not really big into it, but I do still enjoy collecting it, especially because, you know, it's still Nintendo, of course. And the 3DS does not have a huge library. So I think that I'm well over halfway there and I'm definitely on the lookout for other titles whenever they come into our store. We don't get a lot of 3DS games, so it's kind of hard to really find anything that I don't already have, but still, I'm on the lookout. Some other big box stuff around here, and then the DS games, like I said. Um, I did play some DS when I was younger, uh, specifically Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story was one that I really enjoyed. There are a lot of really cool games on here, and I played a lot of the Pokemon games as well. That's Pokemon's kind of my my go-to when it comes to handheld stuff. So there are still some great games. It's just, I like playing on the TV a little bit more. This one I definitely cannot be in the shot for because these are really up high. This is my Game Boy Advance collection. So you saw Game Boy and Game Boy Color earlier. I do have them split up like that by console, even though the boxes are all pretty much the same. But Game Boy Advance is definitely a lot easier to collect than the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. There's a lot of filler titles on Game Boy Advance that you find with the boxes pretty easily, even sealed sometimes, but there's also some really, really good games on the GBA, and I'm really happy with this collection so far. Luckily, I've gotten some of the expensive ones out of the way already, but of course there's a lot more to go. I don't know when exactly I'll be focusing on any handheld console as like my primary goal, but it's definitely going to be after I finish Super Nintendo, NES, PS2, all that kind of stuff. But eventually, I'll get around to trying to complete the Game Boy Advance collection. The Super Nintendo arcade cabinet, unfortunately, is not plugged in right now. There's no outlets on that side of the room. But this thing does work perfectly. It's got these awesome, like, giant controllers that remind me of the Super Boy, which is like the handheld hyperkin version of the Super Nintendo. This thing is really, really cool. I love it. Eventually, you guys will see this working, probably in a future game room tour once we actually have space for it. But this thing is incredible. I've always wanted one, and this is only the second one I've ever actually seen in person. This is the desk that I plan on setting my computer up at, and probably somewhere right over here I'll be streaming from. On the back of the desk here, I've got my Nintendo Power Collection and my other strategy guides, couple vinyl soundtracks here. but. These are all of my Nintendo Power magazines. I'm pretty close to completing the set. Most of the ones that I need are like GameCube and newer. I actually have uh, issue number one through like a hundred and something all without missing any of them. I think the oldest one I need is like maybe 108, something like that. So I need some 64 ones and then a lot of GameCube and Wii era stuff. And then I have some strategy guides here, mostly just Nintendo Power ones. I got rid of a lot of the other stuff. And then just some other like random books and stuff back there. And lastly, these cabinets here and these drawers, you guys don't really want to see what's in here. <laughs> Trust me, I'll give you a quick sneak peek, but it's not pretty. It's just random stuff shoved in. Rad is an awesome movie though. But that's pretty much what it is. It's just like a bunch of random stuff thrown into the drawers. Can't even open that one. So. You're not missing much by, by not seeing in there. But up on top, I do have a bunch of video game related board games 
and then a huge plushie collection and then just some like promo boxes and display boxes and stuff the plushies uh, we've had so many more of these and i decided to pare it down most of what's here is like more like vintage stuff i guess as vintage as you can get with pokemon but a lot of these are older and stuff like that um, we've gotten rid of probably 80% of the plushies that we had in the collection before. So that is my room tour, guys. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. This has been a very long time coming. We've been living in this house for about a year and a half, and I don't even know when the last actual room tour I did at our previous house was. I know that it's been multiple years, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed. If you liked this video, don't forget to smack the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.